So thank you. So hello everyone and a very warm welcome to 365 Saturday Pune 2021. So the session for today is Office Scripts and Power Automate. My name is Clavin and I work as a technical consultant for Rapid Circle and I also work as a technical support manager for Mohimbi. For my community, I am a super user three for the Power Automate community. I go ahead and support about 1000 high level customers and help them related to PDF conversions. I have also worked with all BPM platforms that integrate with SharePoint. I also share my knowledge on my blog post that is clavinfernandez.wordpress.com. Feel free to go ahead and connect to me on LinkedIn as well as on Twitter. So what's going to be the agenda for today? So first and foremost, we are going to work with Office Scripts, which is also known as Excel Scripts. We'll go ahead and see how we can record, edit, write Office Scripts. We'll see how we can go ahead and call scripts from Power Automate, how to pass the data from a script to Power Automate and vice versa, and some real life automation scenarios. And with this, I say that this is the last slide and then it's going to be the thank you slide. So everything is going to be hands on from now. So first and foremost, how do you know that you have Office Script enabled in your environment, right? So to go ahead and enable Office Scripts, you need to be an admin and you need to go to the admin center for Office 365. In the admin center, you need to go ahead under the settings tab so under the settings tabs, go to the organization settings, scroll down and search for Office Scripts. So if you are an admin, this is very important to you. So once you go ahead and click on this feature, you'll see that you can either activate Office Scripts for everyone, or you can go ahead and just activate for a specific group of people. Second settings, who can share Office Scripts? Everyone can share or only it can be shared within a specific group. Note, there's no external sharing allowed. So for some reason, if you don't have Office Scripts and if you have activated it and if it's not visible, you have to wait for 48 hours, okay? It takes less than that, but yeah, that's what this Hello Ribbon says. So once this is done, you can go ahead and create Office Scripts or Excel Scripts. So I'll click on new and I launch the Excel workbook. So how do you know that Office Script is enabled, right? You enabled it, but one thing that you'll see, you'll see an automate tab in the top ribbon, right? The automate tab is the place where you go ahead and write script, record scripts, as well as you can share scripts. So if you have the automate tab, Office Scripts are enabled. So that's good. So once this is done, what next? You can go ahead and record scripts. So if you are a power user, you don't know to write code, Recorder is your friend. Microsoft thinks about us, the power user. But if you are a developer, you can also go ahead and click on all scripts and you can start writing your own script out here. Okay, so this is the script editor that you can use. So one question, is the script editor visible and is the font visible as well? Or should I pump up the font a little bit? So Kunj, you might want to answer this question. Yeah, it's, it's quite visible. Perfect. So if the, now if you are a developer, you can use this, but let's start as a power user. Now let's take a scenario that we can build on, right? I want to go ahead and create a table. I want to go ahead and add few columns and then I want to create a chart. So the first thing that I want to create a table, right? So I'll click on record actions and I'll use the recorder to do it. Now note this, when I click on the cells, nothing gets recorded, right? If I try to paste something, it got recorded, but other than that, it does not get recorded. So I stop the script again. I'll close the script, I'll start the recorder again so that we start off from a blank slate. So clicking things, no, nothing gets recorded. But when I go ahead and try to edit something, so let me go ahead and start with headers. So the first header would be product and the, sec the second header would be price. So you see, as soon as I start editing, you see that the recorder does the trick. 
So remember that selecting cells or clicking around does not record, and that's a big plus, right? Now let's go ahead and add few products. I'll say almonds. I'll say the price is 10, and I'll say fix, and maybe the price is 20. So I have added and everything got recorded. Now next what I want to do, I want to go ahead and add a table. So to go ahead and add a table, I can select the cells or the ranges. And then I can click on insert and I can click on table. Now if you see, I have checkboxed my table has headers, so that's also important because I need headers for my tables. Product and price are the headers. And next what it created a table as well. Just look at the recording that's going there. Now once I have that I can go ahead and add a chart so I can just click here and the chart is added. So even the chart is added. Now if I move the chart as well, it also tells me that the chart has been moved. Perfect, right? So now if I stop the script, it should open it in a code editor. So now if you're a developer, this is what you might want to work on top of, okay? So I'll click on edit and this is the script. Now we are not going to read the script because we are going to create the same scenario because I want to explain the object model as well. But few things that come to my mind, okay. First and foremost, I'll save the script with a name. So SPS demo one. And I'll click inside somewhere so that I can actually save the script. So come on, I'll save the script, save. So where does the script actually get saved? Um, that would be a question that comes to my mind. So remember one thing, the office scripts are working in the context of the user right now, right? So I created the script. If I go to my OneDrive, if I click on the documents, so it's in OneDrive, it's in documents. And if I click on office scripts, you can see at the end SPS demo one is here. So office scripts are stored in OneDrive for business for the user. Now next what? This is good. I think like I have recorded the script, but I think I need to pass it on to a developer, maybe my colleague who knows more of scripting. How can I go ahead and share the script? I have the share button. I can click on share. And this will go ahead and share the script with anybody who has access to this workbook. Now, if I go ahead and open a user, my friend Megan, she's a developer. She wants to go ahead and review the script. So if I go into the Excel demos and if I go ahead and open this workbook. And for this particular user, that's Megan, I click on automate. And if I just wait for some time. So you see out here the script that my mod admin or the user that was logged in is being shared with Megan. I can click on the script. I can run the script, but I cannot edit the script. Why? Because the script owner is mod admin. Now if I want to make changes to the script. So before making changes, I'll just show you one thing. I'll go to documents. And I'll click on office script. So that SPS demo script is not visible to Megan yet. She can only edit it after she goes ahead and makes a copy of it so that the copy goes into her local OneDrive. So if I go here, she has the copy and now she can stop, go ahead and start making changes to the script. So this is very important, okay? So this is what, how you can share script within your within your organization with your colleagues etc now this is good right i'll go ahead and i'll just click on this i'll go ahead and make sure that i close the workbook i'll close the tab itself so now let's go ahead and see this in action i recorded the script but i'll clear the slate and i'll see this in action if the script actually works so to run the script i have a run button and boom, the script actually creates a table as well as it creates a chart. So this is very powerful. Just think you can create scripts to create tables and give it to your users and they can use it.
cool, right? So this is one of the easy ways to go ahead and automate Excel task. Now what I'll do, what I want to do is that I'll go to my automate tab. I will go ahead and click on all scripts and I'll click on new script. Now if I want to go ahead and if I am a developer because this is also a developer track and if I want to write script from a scratch, this is the pane or this is the slate that Microsoft goes ahead and gives us. So remember, this is the main function. The main function is the entry point for the script. Then you have the namespace Excel and then you have the workbook. So one thing to remember, a workbook has got worksheets, right? A workbook has worksheets and worksheets have got columns and rows or ranges. Now, if I want to go ahead and create something within this workbook, I need to go ahead and first access the workbook uh, or the sheet, right? Within the workbook, I need to access the sheet. So I'll say let sheet and how can I access the sheet? I can access the sheet from the workbook. So workbook dot and see my friends, IntelliSense is here to help us out. It's really cool to have such good IntelliSense, right? So I can say get the active worksheet for me. So whatever is the active sheet, just get it. Once I have the active worksheet, what did I do when I was trying to record the script? I was going to go, I was trying to go ahead and create headers, right? So let's go ahead and create the same headers. So let T headers, so table headers is equal to, and remember headers are type of arrays. So I'll go ahead and first header was product. And the second header, if I remember correctly, was price. Now that I have the headers, right? How can I go ahead and set the headers to these rows? I need to tell my script that go ahead and set it to this range of rows, right? So I need to go ahead and say let H range. So I need to get the range, okay? I need to get the range. So how can I get the range? Again, ranges are a part of sheet, right? They are not a part of the workbook. So sheet dot get range. I'll get the range. Again, you see IntelliSense always helps us. It also gives us tips out here. So it tells me, okay, what is the address or the string I need to pass? So I can give, go ahead and say, I want to go ahead and set it to A1 and B1. So I'll say the range A1 and B1. And then I can just go ahead and just close it. Now you see this is giving me a red swiggly. Why? Because I have a typo in my code. I just go ahead and change that. So now that I have the ranges, now what I want to do, I want to go ahead and set the values to that range. So simple again, H range dot set values. I can set the values and I can say what values I need to set. I need to go ahead and set in the table headers. Now I can go ahead and give this a name. SPS demo 2 because I already have one. And if I go ahead and run the script, you see, boom, we have two things out here. So now this is good, but Let's go ahead and think about formatting. What if I want to go ahead and format this a little bit? What if I want to go ahead and change the color? Let's go ahead and change the color of this particular cells. So I can say H range dot. Remember, when you hit the dot operator, you'll find all the methods in that particular list. And what I want to do, I want to format. So I'll say get format. I'll get the current format. And from the current format, I can go ahead and tell. Get the fill. I want to change the color, right? So I want to get the fill. So get fill. What next? Want to get the fill. Then what I want to go ahead and do. I want to go ahead and get the color. Okay, or if I want to not, if I don't want to get the color, I want to set the color. So I don't want to get it. I want to just set the color. So let's see set color. And what color? I'll go for blue. I'm not that animated right now. I'll just say blue. 
And then similarly, I'll change the font color as well. So what I'll do is that I'll not type everything. I'll just go ahead and copy it, paste it. And instead of get fill, just look at this. I can do get font and I can go ahead and set the color to white. So save the script. Remember, saving the script is very important. You don't want to lose your work. So boom, you can go ahead and do that as well. It's as simple as that. So now next what I want to go ahead and quickly go ahead and type in values. So how can I pass multiple values? So I will say let T values is equal to. And again, it will be an array, right? So first would be almond and the value would be 10. Similarly, the second array, I'll just say it's fixed. So I need to make it as a string. And I'll say it's 20. So we'll take the same logic. We need to go ahead and get the ranges. So I'll just copy this. And instead of H range, I'll say T range for table range. And then I want to go ahead and set the values from A2 to B3. So A2 to B3. Now that I have set the now that I have got the ranges, now I have to set the ranges as well, right? So to set the range, it's simple again, the same old function set values dot set values and pass it T values. As simple as that. So once I have this, now comes the little bit tricky part out here. How can I go ahead and add a table? So remember again, where does the table exist? It exists in the sheet. So I can say sheet dot add table and then I can go ahead and give it a range, right? So the range for my table would be A1 to B3, right? Because this is the last cell that I'm going to do. So I can go ahead and say A1 to B3. Then what? I said my table should have header, right? So I need a second variable that is has headers and I need to set it to true. Once this is done, what next? I want to go ahead and add a chart. So again, let chart is equals to where is the chart? It's on the sheet. I want to add the chart on the sheet. So add chart. So chart is of type Excel script. So I'll say it's of type Excel script dot what type of chart I want to go ahead and add. So chart type and I can say maybe column cluttered and next for the chart as well. I need to go ahead and always remember I need to go ahead and give it a range. So re range can be accessed by sheet dot get range. Right and the range would be again the same A1 to B3. Right, I can go ahead and get the range and once I have the range, I think we can go ahead and do it. But if you see, remember this is case sensitive, so make sure that you don't go ahead and neglect that. I had to change the R to capital. So now if I go ahead and run the script, it goes ahead and creates a table and it creates a chart. So this, my friends, is the basics of TypeScript or you can say Excel scripts, which is based on TypeScript. Now that you know this, this is good. Now what if I want to go ahead and run the script on a schedule? Here, our friend Power Automate comes into picture. So in Power Automate, I can just blankly create a flow. I'll click on create. And I'll click on. Let's take it a manual trigger for now. I don't want to go ahead and trigger it using a SharePoint list, but remember you can go ahead and trigger it from a SharePoint list as well and pass in values. The demo is there, so please hold on. So again, I can manually trigger it. I can just go ahead and say, OK, Excel script, Excel online business, and then I'll say run script. Now I need to give it the location 
of my site where I want to run the script. So the site is Excel is SPS demo, so I'll just do that. The document library name is Excel demos. The file that I'm running the script on is book1.xlx. And before going ahead and say, putting the script in, I'll just make sure that the script is saved because I remember that I did not save the script. Saving script is very important. I'll go back to my Power Automate and in the drop down, it will query my OneDrive and give me my script. So this is how you can go ahead and run a script. So let's go ahead and see this in action. So what I'll do is that I'll delete it. I'll delete everything from here. Just go away. I want a clean slate. So, OK, perfect. Now I have a clean slate. Now if I go to my Power Automate, if I save it, and if I test it manually, the script should be created using Power Automate. So you can remotely invoke an Excel script using Power Automate and create tables and no matter what, you can create almost anything from it. Okay, so let's wait for the Excel script to run and it failed. So why did it fail? We were unable, please try again. So I think, okay, it failed because it thinks that it already had a table. So I ran the script before. So let me just check. In some way it has a table. It, that's what it tells me. So never mind. I'll go ahead and create a new workbook. And I'll go ahead and give it a different name. No. For some reason, it's not allowing me to edit it, but that's fine. Workbook one, so book one right now. And if I go back to my Power Automate, and if I go back and instead of book.xlsx, if I run it on book one, let's see what happens here. So let me just run it. So remember one thing, the error was descriptive as well. It said that there was a table in the Excel file and because there was a table, it could not replace the Excel at the table at the same place. Remember that, okay? So you cannot go ahead and overlap a table on a table. Because it had a table, it did not go ahead and create a table on top of it. But when I created a new workbook, it went ahead and ran the script. It created the table. It also went ahead and created the chart. So this is good. If we have errors, it's good. And I hope that I have explained you why the error has come in as well. So now this is good. But what if I want to go ahead and pass the data from my Excel script to Power Automate? How can I do that? So to do that, I'll just go ahead and create a new script. And again, just remember. Again, we need to go ahead and access the sheet. Workbook dot. Get active worksheet. So let's consider a scenario. I want to go ahead and return the row count to Power Automate. How can I do that? So to do that, I can get the active sheet and the rows within the table, right? So I can say get table. So get table, right? What does it need? It needs a key. The key is the name of the table. So I'll go to the table design and I'll copy the name of the table. Go ahead, copy the name of the table. It's a type of string. And then what I'll do, I'll go ahead and say get row count. And what I want to do, I don't want to name it as sheet. I want to name it as row count now. So row count. And then I can just say to debug at console.log and I'll say row count. So console.log is your friend. If you get errors, make sure that you use the console.log to go ahead and debug your problems. Now I want to go ahead and show this row count or return the row count 
to Power Automate. And trust me, it's very simple. You just need to go ahead and use the return keyword and say row count, right? And now I'll again save the script. SPS demo three. Make sure that you have saved the script, saving the script. I'm repeating again, again. It's very, very important. I've seen that. I have lost work as well. I have done the script, but because I forgot to save script, I closed the Excel or something went wrong and my work was lost. So always save your script and let's go ahead and debug the script. If you see, I have added console. That's why it's giving me an output too. And that's right, I have two rows. Now, if I want to use this value in Power Automate, how can I do that? So I'll go to my Power Automate and in from the drop down, it's not showing it yet. So what I'll do is that I'll make the copy of this action. I'll delete this action. So this is what I do. And then I'll go to my clipboard and I'll paste this action in again. So if my script is not visible after the update, or if I created a new script, I just copy it. And here you see I have SPS demo three. And here I'll go ahead and save it. Okay, this is cool. I'll save it and I'll run it again. Now, if everything goes right, if it does not complain, it should go ahead and return me a value two in Power Automate. So let's wait for the Power Automate to execute. So two. So just a caution, you can run around 200 operations with Excel script. You can invoke it 200 times. And you see the result is two. So it has returned me two values. Now this is good. Now this is very good, I say, but what if I want to go ahead and return whole of the table? So I just don't want to leave you here, right? I want to go ahead and take it a little bit forward such that you can go ahead and understand more about Office scripts. So let's go ahead and return all the values from the table. So what I'll do is that I'll clear this and let me go ahead and show you because I want to go ahead and make you familiar with more and more inbuilt functions. So first and foremost, I'll get the table. So that's very important. Once I get the table, what do I need next? Right, I need the ranges. Now, in the past demo, we always went ahead and hard coded the ranges, right? This time I'm getting the table, so making sure that I have the naming conventions right. So table. If I want to go ahead and get the ranges, I can directly query the table and then I can say get. So what is the formula? So I can say get maybe range, yeah, get range, but range between header and total. I want the range between the header and the total. So now you can go ahead and take this whole table. You can go ahead and work with it. Now that I have the range, remember I want to pass this data to Power Automate. So I need to create an interface. And what I'll do is that I'll name the interface table data. And my interface will have two values, right? So first value will be of type will be product because it's the first column. And the second value will be price will be of value string. So I have the interface ready. Now I need to set the interface or I need to set the main function to type table data, which is of type array because I want to go ahead and return an array of values. As I'm telling you, I want to return all the values. Now, if I want to go ahead and return all the values, I need to go ahead and create a variable within my script. So I'll just say record or I can say records because multiple values. So records and then records of type table data, right? Table data. It's of type array. I'm going to return an array. So array again. Now what I want to do, I want to go ahead and pass in the values, but don't you, I've not got the values yet. Do I, I not got the rows. So I'll go ahead and say let rows and I'll say get. Sorry, and then I'll go ahead and say ranges, I guess. Yeah, ranges dot get. Values 
and this will go ahead and store the values in my rows variable. Now these are multiple rows. Remember your table can be huge. You can use the same approach. I'll just say for. I need to loop through the values, right? So I'll say let row sing, take a row and then loop the rows. Now here is the for loop. So all the programming knowledge you have, you can always go ahead and use when you go ahead and use this particular form of TypeScript. If you are if you're very well versed with TypeScript, this is all going to be very easy. So I don't know the scope of the audience, so I'm keeping it very, very simple, right? So I have got the rows now. Now what I'll do, I want to go ahead and push the values into the array. So what is my array that I have defined records dot push? Next what? I want to push the values, but it should be in a format of JSON array. So I'll say product, product as string and similarly price. If I uh have price, price as string. Now this looks good. So product and prices are being pushed, but I want to go ahead and see if it actually has value. So console.log and I can say records. And now. First and foremost, I'll rename it to SPS demo 4. The script is saved. I'll run the script. Now it tells me that I have a problem, but it gave me an output. So technically it's right. It gave me two arrays. If I can just move it up two objects and one contains almond and one contains fix. So this is good. Right, this is very good. But why am I getting the error? Uh, error? So it tells me if I hover the mouse, it's not, it does not have a return type. So I need to go ahead and define a return type. So return, I'll say JS, um, I'll just return the same thing. So just return the records. And if I want to see the values as it is, I can use the JSON function. I can say JSON or stringify. And I'll say stringify the records for me, please. I'll go ahead and save the script and I'll run the script. Now I have no problems. And if you see, this is how the values should be passed. Now this is good. If I go back to my Power Automate, if I just click on edit, I'll get rid of this action. But I'll go ahead. If you remember, I used the clipboard, so I'll just paste it in and it's running on book one, so I don't need to make more changes. So now the demo is XP, SPS demo four, if I'm not wrong. Correct. So I'll go back and I'll go ahead and extend it further because I don't want to just show you the output as it is. Now consider you want to go ahead and send the table. I can just go ahead and create an HTML table, pass in the results and say send an email. So just remember my friends out here what I'm showing you is the basics, but just think how powerful it can be. If you want to go ahead and combine multiple Excel files, you can use this. Take all the things at the end of the month and put it in one Excel file. So this is a use case which I had used with one of the customers. Right and then I'll say. SPS demo four dot. So SPS demo four. No, I'll not add an attachment. I'll just put it in the body. That's even better. I don't want to go ahead and complicate things, so I'll just put it in the body. I'll save it. And then I'll run my script. So now technically if everything is work will work fine, we should have an email with all the columns in my inbox. Perfect, right? So this is how you can pass the data from a script to Power Automate. So let's wait. So I have an email, so it's created at 115. No, so inbox. Come on, I got a delivery failed. So refresh. So it should at least be in my sent items. So let me try to open it.
so this has not got the table for some reason. So maybe I did something wrong. So let me see. But yeah, it has the values. It has the tables as well. So admin dot on Microsoft dot com. Maybe I have a typo in my email. That's why it's not sending it. But yeah, if you look at this, if I copy this body and if I just go ahead and put it in an HTML. Online HTML tool, so online HTML editor. And use the W3 school one. And if I just go ahead and change it. Change these things. Come on, try it yourself. I need to click on it. And if I run it, yeah, it should have the value. So something wrong with my Outlook, but that's fine. We are not here for Outlook troubleshooting. We are here for understanding Excel scripts. So this is how you can return values from a script. Now, what if I want to pass the values from an Excel file to an Excel script? How can I do that? So as promised, we'll start with a real life demo. So I'll open my Excel app. And then I'll go ahead and use a template. So the scenario that I'm going to do is creating. Quotations using Excel scripts, right? So I can go ahead and search for. Templates I'll just search for quote. So I'll use the without tax one. I'll click on create. Now I can go ahead and make changes. So I'll say that my company is Conto. So I'll remove the slogan. I don't need the slogan. I'll get rid of some fields out here, right? I don't need all the fields because it will make my demo more complicated. But remember, you can go ahead and use as many fields as you want. So I have got rid of the fields. So this is what I want to use. So let, let's keep it simple. I want to go ahead and create a quotation. And the quotation should be like this. And remember one thing, I'm going ahead and not changing any formulas from Excel. So I can also leverage Excel formulas, which is going to be, for example, going ahead and calculating the total of the columns. So what I'll do, I'll go ahead and click on file and I'll save as, and I'll save it in my SPS demo and I'll say SPS demo. And I'll save it. Now what I'll do, I'll go back to my SharePoint. I'll get rid of few tabs because it's making it very, very difficult for me to navigate. So again, here I'll just get rid of it and I'll upload it in the Excel demos as well. So file, I'll go ahead and take this XP SPS demo. So now the file has been uploaded, so that's good. So next what I want to do. I want to open the file, so I'll open the file and I want to use Excel scripts, right? To go ahead and pass dynamic values. So I'll click on automate and I'll use the recorder. Enough of writing code for now, right? Now let's go ahead and see the powerful recorder. I'm changing few fields because I want to create placeholders. So I'm just quickly doing this, so quotation number, so just look at the right. You can see that it's getting updated. So I'm just going to create. Product description one. Uh, for example, you can add as many as you want, but I'll add two. So product description two. Amount one. Amount two. So I think this is pretty much it when it comes to my script or recording the actions. So I have recorded my actions and this is good. The script or the recorder has helped me out. But one thing I want to pass the action, but I want to pass these values on the fly. Now for this demo, what I have done is that I have created a quote input list, which is a list with all the columns like address, quote number, customer ID, product description one, amount two, etc. So I want to pass the values from the Excel file for sorry from the SharePoint list into the Excel file. OK, so to do that, I need to go ahead and create parameters. So the first parameter that I want to create is what street address, right? So street address, it's of type. Let's say it's of type string. I can I can just get rid of the double quotes. 
quotation number, string, getting rid of the double quotes for this as well as the customer ID because my next variable is going to be of type customer ID or the parameter. So string. Next what product description one. So this is this demonstration actually shows you how if you know a little bit of TypeScript or a little bit of Office scripts, you can go ahead and do wonders, right? So I'm, I first used the recorder. Then now I'm using some knowledge that I have of TypeScript and this is the basics and I'm going ahead and creating, passing in parameters to my script. So amount of type number. And then amount to type number. So let me just quickly scroll through the script. My script looks correct. Yeah, it looks correct. So I'll just name it SPS demo six. I guess we were on the sixth script, so I'll just save it here. So my script looks good. Now I can go back to my Power Automate. What I'll do is that I'll create a new flow. As I promised you, this is going to be triggered from a SharePoint list. And when it will be triggered, when an item is created, I want to go ahead and create a quote. So what I'll do is that I'll just go ahead and let me quickly check. So SPS demo is the name. List name, I just have one list, so that's good. Now what I want to do, I want to go ahead and run the script. So run script. So best thing is to go here and then type in run. So it's in my SPS site. The document library name is Excel demos. And the file that holds the script is SPS demos. And then I can select the script. If I have named it correctly, it's six, right? It should be five, but it's six. So I can go ahead and save this, but for some reason, for some odd reason, I don't see the parameters. So this comes, this tells me that my script has not been saved correctly for some reason. So I'll save the script again. That's why I always tell you, save your script, save your script, save your scripts. So you see it in the live demo, uh, why it's not happening. So I'll add a new action. I think I have it on my clipboard, so I'll just put in run script. Come on, yo. Now, because my script has been saved, you see that the parameters are visible. Now, what if I don't want, I have only one product, but in this, the script tells me it's mandatory. So here comes your TypeScript knowledge, right? I can go ahead and say, Product description two is optional as well as the amount is optional. Now, if I save the script again, and if I go back, if I delete it again, and then if I go to my clipboard and click on run script, you'll see that now it's not mandatory. There's no asterisk in front of it. So this is how you can make the parameters of fields mandatory, or you can just go ahead and say, okay, it's not mandatory. Now, what I can do is that I can quickly fill in the values with reference to my file, so with reference to my SharePoint. So that's the street address. So I'll just quickly search for fields if I can. Yeah, quote number, so customer ID, so product description one, amount one, product description two, and amount two. Now what I want to do, I want to go ahead and send it as an email or create a file in my OneDrive. Okay, my emails are not working, so I'll create a file in my OneDrive for business. So what I'll do is that I want to create the file, so I want to create the file as a PDF. I don't usually send it as a 
don't usually send it as an Excel file. It does not look professional, so I'm going to use the sponsors. Mohembi converter. So the one who sponsored our event and the main benefit of using the Mohembi converter is that it refreshes the files and that also accommodates the Excel formulas. Now this is the convert action. The convert action needs a source file name. I can create a source file name or I can just say quote dot XLSX, but the file content from where will I get the file content? The file content can be got by using the SharePoint action, right? SharePoint action. So I'll just put in SharePoint. And I'll say get file content. Using path. So what holds my file or what holds the uh, quote? It's the Excel file. So where is it? The name is SPS demo. So I'll just quickly go here. So it should be in Excel demos and the file is SPS demo. So I have this so I can now quickly pass it in. Say file content and then what I can do is that I can create a file in OneDrive. So create. Or I can create a file in SharePoint itself. So SharePoint, I'll just create it in SharePoint. SharePoint create. File. So I'll use the same old site that is SPS demo. I'll give it a folder path. The folder path would be shared documents maybe, and I'll just name it like SPS demo. I can go ahead and pass in dynamic fields, but I can also go ahead and pass in values like this. So save. Now this is saved. Everything looks good. I'll go ahead and quickly test it because I see that we might be running out of time, but we started our session a little bit late. So now I, I, I have triggered it. So what I'll go, I'll go back here. To my list, I'll say Conto. So I'll put in S Pune. India quote number would be quote. One, two, three, four, five. Customer ID would be CS, maybe one, two, three, four, five. Product one would be almond. Product two would be fix. Product one would be almond would be 10, amount would be 20, and I'll save it. So if now everything works correctly, my flow should be running. So my flow is running. I'll go back and open my Excel file. So if you see the script actually changed the values in the Excel file, isn't that awesome? It changed the values and now if my flow actually works completely, yeah, it succeeded. So bravo. So I'll just click on documents and I have an SPS demo dot PDF. So it I have a nice little PDF which is there. But one thing that I see which is not good is that the values are there, but after that it should actually go ahead and clear off the template. So we have some time, so I'll go ahead and quickly create a new script. So. Add script. And I'll go ahead and come on. Click yeah. Now I want to go ahead and clear the values. So to clear the values, it's going to be very easy. The demo is going to be very easy. I just need to go ahead and access the workbook and from the workbook I can get the ranges and then I can go ahead and clear. So let me quickly type it workbook. Dot get active. Worksheet. And then I can say this is good. I can just say get ranges. I want to clear multiple ranges. So the ranges that I want to clear is B3. So remember you can also pass in ranges. Oh, by comma separated. So D3 and D4, I guess. Yeah, so this would be D3, D4. So this would be good. So D3 and D4. I want to also go ahead and clear B7 and B8. So I'll just type in B7 and B8. Similarly, go ahead and clear D7 and D8. D7 and D8. 
So one thing to note out here, I'm not going ahead and clearing the formulas or the cells which have formulas because you don't want to clear them off. So SPS demo seven. I should just name it SPS demo seven. And if I run the script, let me test it real quick. Yeah, it clears off the value. So what I can do, I can just add it at the end such that it clears off the values as well. So access for business and I'll say run, run script. I can just say, where is my script? It's an SPS. So the file that holds the script because I want to run the script on the file XP. So file would be, come on. And the script would be the clear, the last script in the list, right? So demo seven, I'll just save it. What I'll do is that I'll quickly do another test, but this time I'll do a test such that I add only one item because you remember I went ahead and did mention that if you don't want to go ahead and specify it as mandatory, you can do that as well. So I'll say Clavin, Mumbai, quote number MUM, one, two, three, four, five, six, customer ID is MUM, one, two, three, four, product description one would be, I just want almonds and the amount is 10 and I'll save it. So now if everything works, it should create another file in my documents folder. So I'll see, so let's wait. It should create a file with the same name. If I have versioning enabled, it should do the trick. So it's running. It's converting the file. So now if I open the Excel file, let's see. OK, it added almonds. So good, good, very good. And now it should also run our SPS demo script such that it clears off all the items and leaves it as an empty slate. So the next time when you go ahead and create it, you don't need to go ahead and get rid of values. Now this ran, but the values did not go ahead and refresh. I think the reason is simple. It did not save the script. I'll just run the script again. But yeah, this is the final demo and I'm open for questions after this demo. So before we go ahead and get into the questions, just I want to just say that I hope this session was informative and thank you for joining and a big thank you to our sponsors rapid circle and mohembi as well as our organizers as well as pune tech community thank you have a great day and i'm open for questions